Welcome to another edition of Grace Under Pressure, where my guest today is Dr. Abraham Kouris. I'll tell you all about the good doctor in just a moment. Grace Under Pressure is that show that, that deals with what's too often dismissed as the soft stuff, the caring, the commitment we exert for others. And when you do it as a leader, as you will definitely discover that Dr. Abe is, uh, you do it with the singular purpose of bringing people together with for common cause. Dr. Abraham Kouris, welcome. So, Thank you for having me, John. It's good to see you again. Great. I want to tell everybody about you. You are multi-talented, a multi-talented thought leader. Uh, you have a doctorate uh, in business administration and among your other many, many things, you're widely published um, and you have been um, a con completed. Um, you're an academics academic, but you're in the real world. <laughs> you're a consultant to other consultants and organizations, something that you have done quite, and you are very, very um, visible on social media and sh always sharing good insights and posts and blogs uh, from other people, as well as your own work, which makes you a much in demand person and you have a very high social media profile. So um, I want to tell, uh, so I just wanted to say welcome. And we, you also have at something which is no other guest has had. You are a licensed SAG and after a talent agent, and you're located in Southern California. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Uh, Abe, welcome to Grace Under Pressure. So, thank you for having me, John. It's a pleasure to be Great. with you and your, your your audience as well. Great. We are going to open with a visual, um, which is uh, the journey of a compassionate leader. And for those um, listening via audio, we will just describe this visual. It is a pyramid, and as I'm going to say, it reminded me of a, the work of another Abe, Abraham Maslow. So. Hey, where did this idea of this particular journey of a compassionate leader arise? What what spawns, what uh, sparked this idea? So. Thank you, John. It really started with COVID. Uh, the things that we had, the difficulties as a community, as societies, countries, we suffered. And then we lacked leadership during that time. And this has always been on my mind and been a research in progress. And it developed really in 2021. So my work in research in 2021 was the final uh, point where I said, let's put this one into perspective and put it into a pyramid of sort. Uh, you mentioned Abraham Maslow. I'm a big fan of his work. And I teach that, as you said, academic, I teach that in my MBA classes and sometimes in my undergraduate classes as well for management and business uh, people, students. Uh, so the idea for this one came with me a long time ago, and I developed it as I progressed and I developed myself. Uh, it isn't necessarily, it looks like the pyramid of Abraham Maslow. It looks like the pyramid of the like pyramid of Jesus. But this pyramid specifically uh, deals with being mindful and self-aware versus the, the uh, Maslow's pyramid, which is based on needs. Uh, here, awareness and mindfulness essential to it. I like it. And so the journey begins, if I understand it, is from I to we. How do we go from I to we? We all like to say that. But w when I ask you that, um, Dr. Abe, what, what comes to your mind? So. I to me is you start with self-compassion. You develop yourself first before you start uh, sharing your knowledge with others. My motto is inspire, enlighten, and educate. That's always been and will always be, and hopefully with time add one or two to it. But when I inspire others, I have to be inspired first. I have to be enlightened first. I have to be educated first. So it starts with self-compassion. Uh, you develop, you get educated, uh, you be informed, you become open-minded um, before you go to others. So really, okay. it's, it's with self-compassion. I like it. When I see, I, I'm not, I love the concept of um, self-care, but also self-compassion. So, and I like the way you found, you explain that we have to, uh, do we not have to, let's say, love ourselves before we can love others? So, yes, we do love, we have to love ourselves <laughs> in a way that is balanced, not to love ourselves, to be a narcissist love ourselves so we can, when we get educated and I promote to get the best education, I promote to be the rich, as rich as you possibly can. You do that not for the purpose of you, 
you do that for the purpose of helping others and be of service to others. When you get education, you transfer that education to others. So the primary purpose is to serve others by improving self. Great. So what is, why is it so hard sometimes for us to give ourselves a break or exert self-compassion? What's holding us back, Abe? So, of thinking of ourselves, you mean? Or, yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, what holds us back from it? I mean, um, we, we think we're doing it, but maybe we're not. We don't cut ourselves a break, I think. That's what I... Self-awareness. I think it goes back to the model. So the journey of a compassionate leadership is a model. It's a model that is built on the work and success of others. I happen to put it into perspective. My This is my work. Mm -hmm. 2001, this book is coming up. And it's going to be the journey of the compassionate leadership in the model is there. What it gives you, it gives you levels, levels of phases of life, steps into the journey. Mm -hmm. The reason we, as far as we self-compassion and we don't get into it is you're not aware of it. Self-awareness. We, when, we, when we say you become mindful, we well, become mindful of what? Become mindful of the environment in what's within it, within that environment, mm -hmm. including you. So to have self-compassion, you have to be aware. And I hope a model like this in a show like that, what you have now, will bring awareness to others so they have to take care of themselves. We're not saying be selfish. We're saying be in a position to help yourself. We want I want you to be a billionaire. I'm I am calling <laughs> I'm calling for revamping of capitalism. This is, yeah. this is also leading to that. My initiative yeah. leads to that. When you have a leader that is compassionate, but that leader is also a billionaire. That leader is powerful. That leader deals with society with compassion. And compassion is so important right now. As you move up the hierarchy uh, of the of your uh, move up the stages of the model, it's next of kin, our family. We understand that our our local environment, and that and that can be very challenging in our, our fractured times. We live in a time of polarity and disinformation. So, what role does compassion play in that, uh, Doctor Abe? So essential, essential compassion. When we say compassion here, we don't mean self-pity or pitying others. We're complimenting others. To be an authentic, transparent, and compassionate leader is to be someone with action. Some A leader that do that work. We don't just talk about it. And I want to also bring a concept of empathetic. They say empathetic leaders, right? Mm -hmm. Being empathetic is good, but it isn't compassion. Being empathetic, you think and feel you want to help others. Being compassionate is you actually help others, and you would never stop. I'm so glad you say that because you told. You, I've always said that empathy is the expression. Excuse me, compassion is the expression of empathy, yes. and it's just as you said. It's and from a leadership standpoint, leaders' responsibility is to act. And um, and then as you move up in where our neighborhood, as we go up the stages of this model, there's the organizational dynamic where we uh, make our living, where we work. So uh, tell me how I can be compassionate to my coworkers who drive me crazy. So yes. <laughs> the role of the, the organization in general, let me define organization. Yeah. An organization is an entity established through social society it could be different structures, but in general, this is, it is it has a purpose. It's built in compasses or composed of people. The, these people are individuals, teams, and groups with the common purpose to achieve an objective of that organization. Then in the old days, in the old days, we used to think of maximizing the profit share of the uh, of the shareholders, the stakeholders, right. maximizing their profits. Now, what we're saying, the model today, and as envisioned by this model, a compassionate leader is someone, he or she, or she or he, is someone who cares for the leadership, who cares for, loves the shareholders, and when it makes them, when it make them the richest they can be, he loves the employees, and he wanna make them thrive, and have a better quality of life 
and also a, a, a leader that cares for the consumer and the customer and society and add value to them. So we're really including all the components of what makes an organization and its environment. And a good leader would do that. A compassionate leader would do that. And in the model, I teach that. Yeah. And as you move up um, in the next stage, it's something which is I'm of greater and greater interest. And it's the sense of belonging. And that comes to community. So um, can our, um, I, I like to think of a workplace as community. Is What's your perception of that, uh, Dr. Abe? So. Community is essential. You know, see, we, we aim toward building a community because we're toward collaboration. When we talk about a community, you're talking a, a, several factors that makes it, several entities that make it an organization is part of it. Individual citizens is part of it. Other structures are part of it, churches, so hospitals. What makes a community is what makes it thrive to achieve the, to the best what's to those members of the community. An organization right. is a thing. What people living within that community needs an organization to help them thrive. When we have within the organization, we think of um, corporate responsibility. Right? Right. What is that? Corporate responsibility is what you think within the community you're in. What, how to improve it. How to, we said belonging. And belonging not only for one segment of that society and community, it's to all when you have inclusion. Today we talk about diversity, inclusion, and equity. Community will make that happen if it's properly formed. It's essential. Yeah, I think if I can draw this, I love how you said the organization is a thing, but what we belong to is one another, i.e. a community, how we yes. connect and relate to one another. And I think what's essential, too, in this model, if, if we think of compassion, let me ask this, is that when we think of community, that doesn't mean we all think or do uh, the same things, does it? So, no, it doesn't. Yeah. No, it doesn't at all. And this is how we develop the I to the we. We don't think of I, I, I. We think how to be think as a group, regardless of race, color, religion, uh, ethnic background, uh, and also, also sexual orientations. I very much advocate for all of that. The community, it has to be for all, for all. Yeah, right. and you have to think differently because if you think differently, you bring better things to, the, to that community you're in. And if, Great. And we'll may, sure. may, John, may I do something? See, yeah, look, please. When, when we do this journey, we have self-compassion, next of kin, family and stuff. You develop them. But then we go, let's go to the local community, the local environment. I know we're doing this through time because we're skipping through them. But local environment, this leader is literally learning how to become the best leader he can be through compassion and compassionate leadership encompasses all think of any model it is within the compassion servant leadership is there transformational leadership is there transactional leadership is there all of them are within you with the minute you become compassionate leader you really become it but as long as you're authentic and transparent and then there is no no uh, limit to what you can achieve in your potential so in the local and, community, what we do is we develop that individual to think locally when they go to, and then they go to the organization and they grow the community at large. So it's really a training in progress where they can learn the steps right. one step at a time as long as they're mindful. Great. And I think what is interesting, and I, that's why I wanted to show this model, because the, the very um, the pinnacle is what you say about serving others. But if I look at this, what, as you've described it, as we go along in each one of these stages, we are serving others. A am I interpreting that correctly, uh, 100%, Dr. A? 100%. Thought comes to me all the time. How come we're saying these are levels? This is based on being mindful. You can be on the highest level, and then you realize you lack self-compassion. So you jump being mindful that I'm caring for others, not caring for myself. What's happening? I'm aware. So I go back to self-compassion and start being healthy. I'm aware that I'm not taking care of my family. I'm not taking care of my elders, but I happen to be on the top. Then I jump. Yeah. You serve others all the time. When you reach the, the highest level, which is, it doesn't mean highest, oof, highest level and you're not caring for the other levels no you are there too but when we say the highest level it means someone 
reach the potential of serving others without receiving anything in return. All the other levels, you're serving others. But there's a possibility of the I is still strong on you. We haven't developed the I to the we. That when you reach the highest level, you reach the we. You become we. You think we. Mm -hmm. you, you don't think of your own selfishness anymore. You become a reformer of society. You become a godlike uh, individual that helping others. But I want to bring something, John, if I may. Yeah, please. When you reach the highest level, which a potential is there because we're giving you the model and you become, you can become one. In the highest level, I've always talked about the, the pyramid of Giza, but I never formulated that in, in words yet. But I want to put that on your show. There is, in history, there is Moses. We know Moses as, you know, the, the Giza, Moses mm -hmm. in Egypt. There is another model. There is the Muslim model, which is based on needs. There is Abraham's chorus model, which is based on mindfulness and self-awareness. But there is another one comes to mind, and I wrote that in my book. And I want to bring it on your show. The, the Jesus, the great pyramid of Jesus, is also a pyramid. And the reason I'm bringing it to it, because it's a pyramid, and it's the top thing, that, that, that little thing on the peak I want to cover. When Moses came to challenge, Moses is a good man, good leader. <laughs> so what we, we're supposed to be a good compassionate leader. Then he came to challenge a ruthless leader called the Pharaoh. That's <laughs> through history. So Moses start talking about a higher being, start talking about the highest and you know serving and stuff. <laughs> so Pharaoh came to his people and said, "What is he talking about? I'm your God. <laughs> Build me something." I can reach that God of Moses. And he wants to go to the peak. So what came to my thoughts, my mind? As we reach, as we as we climb these steps and we go to the peak, you have to expect, this is two leaders out there, you have to expect the first one that reached the peak is the like of pharaohs. You have to know there are leaders occupying that space. The minute you arrive, and you start challenging the status quo, you will be the first to go. They will fight you. So do not be a meek leader. Be a compassionate leader with accountability. You place accountability in place. And you have to expect people will challenge your position as you climb up. Well, so you know, with that question, and, 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 and in fairness, I mean, um, if we don't challenge our ideas or if, or if our leadership is not tested, then it really isn't, it may not be valid. Um, and so uh, it, it, that's, that's what living through or leading through these challenges are. But you point is. out, it's, there's all, and this word gets into your model of society. How do we become model citizens? I mean, what is a model citizen? One who serves uh, views as the community, not an individual. We, you know, in a democracy, we have a culture. We don't serve an individual. We serve our uh, nation. Uh, and so uh, a w wise point and very contemporary right now, in my opinion. So That's very right. true, very, very, very true. And what I meant, John, very quickly, I meant that when you are attempting to be better in a better society, you're challenging the status quo of the establishment. That establishment, through leader or leaders or a group, they're going to challenge you. You're doing good. Although you're doing good to the society, they're going to challenge you as well. So be, be aware of that. Self-awareness comes into that as well. Yeah. And, and that's what, but I think what's, what the beauty of your model is that it's reinforced at every level from self through family, through community, organization, all that. And so that draws upon strength if we look at leaders in our history who have challenged the status quo, be it Martin Luther King or Nelson Mandela or whomever, um, they, uh, they had this inner strength, which was nourished by their, the challenges and the hardship, but they also had the community around them too. So absolutely. The community yeah. is essential. What is the community though? The community is the next of kin. Listen to this. As you develop, you're coming from nowhere. You, you develop self-compassion. When we say self-compassion, we're talking self-development. You become the it, the individual that can make a difference. But you're not going to climb the other ladders without people around you. You need a base, a base that believe, believe in your ideas. 
They have to believe that you're authentic enough, transparent enough, truthful enough. And then they climb with you for the, for the purpose of serving the society in your idea. And that's, they, they want to follow you because they trust you and you have earned that trust. Am I yes. correct? So, yeah. Absolutely. And this is where you become mindful from the start, dealing with individuals that love you because of blood, neighbors and others. Mm -hmm. You have to be authentic from the beginning. Be aware of that. You have to be authentic and be um, act in a, your behavior should model what you're preaching. Right. I'm glad you talked about authenticity because that's a subject of I, I like to explore. And but there's also the sense of humanity among our authenticity. You know, even in the best of us, none of us are perfect. None of us are saints and all no, that. No, no, and so no. that includes our frailties as well. And I think it includes that's where vulnerability comes in and say or our humility. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I'm, and being is authentic. But sometimes I can be a jerk. <laughs> so. Well, see, self-awareness not to be a jerk, yeah. self-awareness to know what limitations. Being vulnerable is needed. You can't, there is nobody has it all or know it all. Yeah. You, when you talk to your, this is what takes someone who's authentic and someone really know their limitations. If I'm a leader and I feel, I don't want to feel vulnerable, I'm not going to ask for feedback because I know it all, right? Remember, I am, I'm the it, I'm the person who knows everything. Yeah. No, don't think like this. Go to the janitor and ask them what they think. <laughs> go to any other person, go to your vice president, go to any person in that community you're in or that organization you're in and ask them, so be it. That's when you show this level of lack of knowledge, could be vulnerability of, oh, he doesn't know it all. That's actually, you become more authentic to them. You become right. more connected to them. And then they will feel important because you're asking their feedback. Actually, if you're not vulnerable, I'm, I want to tell you this. Some of us, they perfect themselves to become the best human being possible. Some of us, when not, nobody can reach a perfect human being. But let's say you reach a level of self-compassion and you become the highest there is. With that, I advise you become vulnerable. Mm. Don't let it get into your mind and hide that, oh, I know it all. Be become vulnerable because people are looking at you with admiration and they want to emulate you. If you're this high in pedestal and your white horse and you're not going to look at others, this is not a model you want to promote. Yeah. So you become vulnerable on purpose. You know what I'm saying? It's like you become vulnerable. Without question. And I think uh, so the word... Yeah, purposefully. And purposefully. there's an act of humility about that. And humility, I believe, comes from strength and the fact of I know myself, self-awareness, that I'm not uh, afraid to acknowledge my limitations. And when I do that, I invite people to collaborate or cooperate with me. Is that is that a valid concept for you, Dr. Abe? Yes, collaboration is essential. But when you invite people, make sure you invite people that not necessarily think alike, but people who are understanding where you're heading. Because if you have too many feedbacks, they can distract you as well. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, it's, so you really have to be... Create, yeah. a, create a group, a task group. You already know where you're heading. You know you already know your vision. Mm -hmm. Create a task group that you molded mm -hmm. or you, you were able to put together with the understanding they believe in what you believe. Right. This has been great. I do want to touch, although time is racing by, I do want to touch on the, your, uh, um, your agency, talent agency that you have. And what led you to create it and how does it work? So, so. I've always been in, I'm in LA, based in LA. So my, 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 I have a degree, as you know, I have so many degrees, but one of them is in film school. I have a degree in film school. When I was young, I wanted to be in Hollywood. So I worked for different production companies, production manager this, production manager that. I used to break down the script in all of this. And I made the film or two um, more student films. I did an animation film. I did an actual uh, drama film and stuff. With time, I realized that I can't commit 100% because Hollywood is who you know, as you know. So I, th I said, if I'm not going to be a talent in Hollywood, and that's not my intention, 
let me present uh, talent. So I went, I morphed from being in the production side into the pre presentation side, representation side. And uh, I got the credential to be a SAG after, uh, first it was SAG, then they they kind of became a one union, became a SAG after it takes also. After That's the Screen it, Actors was, Guild and then the one, the actors for television as well. Yeah, so. for the Federation, yeah. And that takes, uh, not everybody can be a SAG after a member, meaning talent, and not everybody can be a SAG after an agent. It's a difficult process to take and, and undertake. Uh, so, but I was lucky because I know the industry and I was lucky enough and I put the effort and time to be able to teach others. And if I may also, when we talk about compassion, it doesn't really go far from being a SAG after a talent because I'm not only a SAG after a talent. Uh, Jean, I have so many licenses and I have so many businesses in a very modest way. When I say become the best you can become, I don't just talk about it. I want to become the best I can become. Yeah. I also have a real estate agency. I have an insurance agency. I have an education company. Uh, humbly, I do this, but I, what I'm saying is that when we, when we say multitask or multi-talented, uh, is because you have so many things. It happened, SAG, and after happened, one of them. It's a prestigious title. But what you do as a leader, can, how can you bring compassion to Hollywood through connection? <laughs> I, am, I, am, I am rich in uh, access. Uh, I am rich in access. I can access any individual I want, any person I want, and I can give them my ideas, my vision. See, some people, they dream, I do. So I was like, this, some people this, dream, I do. But we yeah. are racing to the end. And as you know, I ask every guest a question about grace. Um, I think what you've just been telling us is an act of grace. But what is the story that you want to share with us today, uh, Abe? So, um. so grace, if you think of a grace, I think grace is a blessing, right? Is it would, would we define it as a blessing? I'm blessed by so many people. So many friends. One of you. You're, well, you're one of them. It's you're my grace. <laughs> part of grace. You're the gracious, you're the gracious you. individual. So you're a blessing to to know you. It's a blessing to know everyone we have in common. But really, the story I want to share about grace, and this is more like a personal story. I am faithful to to the supreme being, to the higher being. Mm -hmm. I I'm a believer. Every day, this is the story. Every mm -hmm. day. I bow and I say, God, you promised if we thank you that you're going to add to this, to what we have. I this is a promise he said in his mm -hmm. holy books. He right. said, if you thank me, I'm going to give you more. Mm -hmm. So I bow. I am selfish there. I <laughs> bow to him. I All manipulate right. my God in a way. I talk <laughs> to my God. I said, you promised me if you... If I thank you and I'm thanking you, you're going to add to my worth, self-worth, self-value, what I can contribute to society. Please do. Please answer my prayers. Okay. That's my grace story. Yeah. Is to be blessed. No, it's beautiful because what you're, what you're doing, just to be clear, is you're not, uh, you are thankful, but you're, you are actually the ultimate uh, act of grace is uh, sharing it with others. Am I correct? And so... Make yeah. me the best I can be so I can be your servant. Perfect. Wonderful. Um, Abe, how can people find you? So, DrAbeForest.com, so. D-R-A-B-E-K-H-O-U-R-E-I-S.com. And as you know, our motto is inspire, enlighten, and educate. And I hope people could connect there. I'm also on LinkedIn. On, I have a small follower following on, uh, you, what is it, uh, Twitter. <laughs> I don't use it much, but it's just no. a presence. I'm right. also on the, I'm also on Trumps. Uh, I, I added my name everywhere. I have two <laughs> or three followers on social. What is it? Uh, the media, Trumps media, uh, Truth oh, media. Sure. Truth I, media. Would, I wouldn't. Yeah, I added my name everywhere, and yeah. just anyway, one or two. We'll, we'll, we'll keep it on to that. We'll, we will put your uh, website in the notes. Um, uh, Abe, it has been an honor to speak to you today, and thank you for sharing your time. And with that, we're going to head out. Thank you, John.